fighting hits an emotion in everybody that maybe you weren't even aware you had. There's no rational reason why I like to be punched and kicked. But when somebody starts to punch and kick you, it wells up these emotions inside that you have to be able to get past. The journey is more important than the end because where's the end? The journey is the most important part. That's where we're learning about ourselves. As a fighter, you can kind of take that whole mentality and go through life with it. Well, sometimes you have good days, sometimes you have bad days, but in the end, you just got to get up and keep training. Just because things didn't go my way, it's not the end of the world. You need to have that trait to be able to fail and keep going as a fighter. The best things in life, there's no shortcuts. So with failure, that's like the long road and everybody must have failure in their life if they're going to be a better person or succeed. I think failure is the doorway to success. My name is Prairie Rogillo. I'm from Seaside Heights, New Jersey, and I'm the owner of Girl Fight Martial Arts and an amateur Muay Thai fighter. Girl Fight is America's leading all-female martial arts school. We're located in Toms River, New Jersey. We're just like any other co-ed school, except we're all females. When I was a kid, I had a friend who uh, did karate and I wanted to do it, so I got into Taekwondo as a kid, and then as an adult, I got back into the martial arts to lose weight, get in shape. I was uninspired by a lot of the martial arts schools that had been around here, um, so I just thought maybe I'd start a two-day-a-week program for women, and uh, I would get back in shape, and I would also teach them real martial arts instead of cardio kickboxing. So I went to a place I used to work, which is the Brick Police Athletic League in Bricktown, New Jersey, and I said, hey, I have this idea, I don't know if anybody will show up, but if I make any money, I'd split the money with you. And they said, sure, go ahead. On the first day, we had 10 girls. By the second month, we had 30, 40 girls in the class, and we were needing more time and um, more more space. And then about a year and a half or so after being opened, I opened uh, my own space in Toms River, New Jersey, and became a real martial arts school seven days a week. <laughs> Muay Thai is the, um, the art of eight limbs. Muay Thai uh, or Thai boxing is from the country of Thailand. It is their uh, national sport there. Muay Thai fighting is a, it's a blood sport. I mean, I think it could get uh, just as tough and rough as an MMA, except you don't get to tap out. The difference between an amateur and a pro Muay Thai fight here in the state of New Jersey is the gear. In New Jersey, there's two amateur levels. Class B is headgear, shin pads, all of that good stuff. Class A is uh, no gear and pro rules. Muay Thai has mostly been a male-driven sport, and I'm actually really surprised that Girl Fight is one of the first of their kind. Um, if you've been to fights, then you would know that uh, girl fights are always fun to watch. They're always intense. And little by little, I guess the mainstream venues are, are showcasing women. So it, that's great for us because people are seeing, wow, oh, all right, these girls are not supposed to be baking and cooking. They could be, also be fighting and it will be entertainment and maybe even more entertaining than some of these guy fights. Well, enough room for a foot to go in between. It's crazy that at this point we're still in the Stone Age and that uh, Girl Fight is the only 
true all-girl Muay Thai school out there. I was always one of the few girls for years, even in this country, doing it. And that was part of the reason I also started Girl Fight because I thought, well, maybe they just don't feel comfortable coming into a gym where uh, maybe they're feeling insecure about their bodies. So if I made an all-girl gym, maybe they'd be more interested in actually trying the martial arts. So March 25th, 2011, my first fight, runner-up. Warriors Cup, um, I think this one was Everybody's a Winner too. I think this was a draw with Jenna Serio. Ah, uh, this is Jamie Phillips' trophy. She's a winner. This was her first fight, March 25th, 2011. Also the same time I got this one. Both had our first fight on the same night. Um, Jamie won unanimous decision, and I lost unanimous decision. Perfect timing. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Are you kidding me? You've been filming her dusting the trophies? Jamie is my girlfriend, and she is a student at Girl Fight as well as a fighter. For my fights, she usually is the second person in the corner. I'm Jamie Phillips. I have been working out at Girl Fight for uh, almost, five, I guess, five years now. Uh, that's how long I've known Prairie. I am a fighter, an assistant coach. I help out with the kids class. I help out with the adults class. Full time, I'm a detective sergeant with the uh, Ocean County Sheriff's Department. This one. It's a little faded, been in the sun for a while, but it's WPA belt. Um, I was the champ. I am now the former WPA champ. For the past few months, something has been irking me. That something is Kate Allen. She's got something that's mine, and I'm coming to take it back. My first fight with Kate Allen was at Resorts Casino in Queens under Take On Productions. It was for my belt. The first round when I came back to the corner, my coach said, I could have gone either way, you gotta pick it up. The second round, he was happy with what was going on, he said, just keep doing that. And the third round, they were sure that I had taken that fight. You know, I think the first round was really close. If I would have scored it, I would have scored it the first round for Kate, and then I would have scored the last two rounds for Prairie. When I went to the center to wait for the calling, Kate sounded like a defeated person. Kate kind of was like, okay, me. I looked back to my corner and said, oh, maybe we had it wrong. But as I left, the promoter was like, that was a, a BS call. I can't even believe that. You need to protest that. People I don't know are jumping through the crowd, screaming that I was robbed. I definitely took it 10 times worse than Prairie. That night, if I actually could have grabbed a hold of somebody that ran the whole fight, I probably would have choked them out. If she won it fair and square, it's a totally different story. But that wasn't the case. And uh, the look on her face was a look of loss. When they called her name, she had this look of shock on her face. And we all were shocked. I mean, Kate Allen spent a lot of time on the ground. I know she said she slipped, but she didn't slip. You can't slip nine times. I do think I won that fight. I do feel I was robbed of my belt. So now we go into this rematch. It's a five rounds, this fight. So I'm going to train a little harder than I usually do. <laughs> there is no less than 100% for her walking into this fight. Prairie has a funny, joking personality about her. But when she steps from outside the ring into the ring, it's like another person comes out of Prairie. She goes from that nice little dog, you know, that you can pet to an animal inside the ring. She's made huge strides in her training. She still has the same Prairie style that she's always had, but now she's got a lot more tools, a lot more tools in the toolbox. Going into this, I'm gonna be even more fierce, and when I see her mouth drop like it did last time, I'm gonna finish her. Come this fight, she's, she's gonna tear this girl apart. Listen, Kate, you think you won that fight, you didn't. You know it, all of that arena knew it. So now Prairie's coming back. So be ready to get an ass whooping. Kate, I know you're a nice girl and I hope you enjoyed wearing my belt for a little bit, but I'm coming for it and I'm bringing it back home where it belongs because you didn't deserve it.
So I'm gonna take you down the street and I'll take you to some of the harder hit areas of Seaside. You'll see some homes split in half. This was about six feet of water in this area that we're driving through now. You know, you see this house over here, totally demolished from the storm surges. And I grew up in Bricktown, which is only about, I would say, 15, 20 minutes away. I've lived on the barrier island, so between Seaside Heights and Seaside Park, probably for the last three years. About two years ago, they took away my renter's insurance. And when I asked the insurance company why, they told me, oh, we're coming up to the 30-year storm. So clearly the insurance company had some idea something was bound to happen soon. Less than eight hours before the storm came in, I was running on this boardwalk getting ready for a fight that was less than two weeks out. I didn't want to leave, I was gonna ride it out actually. And I only left about four hours before the storm came because water started flushing in from the roof and uh, the toilet water was actually moving up and down and uh, there was low tide and high tide in the toilet bowl and I kind of thought, you know, I'd never seen that before. I, my mother raised a smart girl, I should just get the heck out of here and I did. And you'll be able to see, if you look over here, you can see a little bit more of what's going on from the pier. And they claim to have the, they're gonna have the boardwalk done by Memorial Day weekend, which will be good. Uh, Seaside have lost 75% of their income just because they lost the boardwalk. Less than a year ago, it was a perfect boardwalk. It was a perfect local summer here. Getting ready for one of the biggest fights in my life. Within the next 45 days, my life and everybody's life in, at the shore would be turned upside down. I found myself the, after the storm, you know, weeks after, looking through pictures of my life at the beach and crying as if it was like an old boyfriend and I would run into people that I knew. You know, as soon as we would see each other, we would just start bawling. Um, it was, uh, you know, I don't really consider myself a big crier. I, I think I'm a tough girl, but uh, it was really, it was really hard emotionally. And I packed my bag thinking I was coming back the next day. Um, so it was, it was hard just to be uplifted so quick in less than 24 hours, your whole world turned upside down. It's crazy. I had never seen anything like that before. I really hope to never see anything like that again. So we'll, we'll see what the next few years have to come and who stays and... But we're trying to get back to normal. It'll be a quiet summer, I think. In the next few weeks, we have two girls making their debut at the Warriors Cup. We got Hazel, who's getting ready. It'll be her first fight at 115, and Deanna, who is coming in at 135. Hazel is kind of the quiet type. Uh, Deanna, on the other hand, if she's having a day or she's not wanting to do something, you know she doesn't want to do it. She's going to tell you she doesn't want to do it. Hazel's just a fly-by-the-seat girl. People don't know how good she actually really is. She's a feisty little one. She has this quiet confidence about herself, really non-intimidating whatsoever. And then you start training with her and you're just almost thrown off about the power the little girl has. As for Deanna, she's a police officer, so she already came kind of with a, I don't want to say like a tough girl attitude, but she gave the persona of a tough chick. I didn't plan on fighting when I came here. I just wanted to get back into shape after my son was born. As time went on, I, I guess I just wanted to get in the ring and, and fight.
with Deanna, you know when she's feeling down or she's upset. Once she starts to shut down, it's been really hard to train her. <laughs> Out of your head. There's nobody left in that ring besides you and your opponent, so you need to be able to pick yourself up and keep going. It's good to be hard on yourself, but not to the point where you're totally defeated and don't remember your strengths and what you're capable of doing. I'd like to say I was confident. I want to be confident, but I also know that whoever I'm competing against probably feels just as confident as I do, is probably working just as hard, if not more than me. It was each time I knew, you know what I'm saying, it was the fear of getting the hit, but you would have done more damage and hurt me more with the leg than, you know what I'm saying, than me just getting a, you know what I mean, a reach and jab. Deanna, I think she's beating herself up a little bit. She's got her own little demons in her head. She gets in that dark place and it's kind of hard to, to train her. I, I think I'm motivated. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty motivated for it, but I think more than anything, it's a lot of the, you know, in your head, like, you don't want to lose. Are you sure you want to do this? Is You know, it's just all these things in your head. Even when I'm sleeping, I wake up, I'm like, okay, it's, I, I, I gotta do this, and I'm nervous. She's so stuck in her head, she doesn't need to be, and it's just reminding her that she's beating herself up too much. I got a lot to, uh, I guess, prove for the girls. We're a team, and, oof, uh, I like family. I uh, just want to make this school proud and crew proud. I'm not worried about myself. I'm more worried about here. Comes time for the fight, and if you can't get out of your own head, you know, she may lose, but I think she's going to get past it. She'll be fine. Uh, I just don't want to let anybody down. Good job. Deep breath. All right. Jagger and Anna. I want to I was very nervous the first time I held the gun. My hands were shaking. I didn't know what to expect, how loud it was gonna be. Well, I was born in New Jersey, but my father was in the military, so I moved all over for a while. And I came back to New Jersey when I was 12. I was probably in eight different grammar schools. It was hard because you had to learn how to make friends real quick or you didn't, which I was more of the quiet type. I didn't really make too many friends. After my parents divorced, it was just me and my mom. My dad stayed in the military and I didn't see him for a while because he was always either on a ship or in Florida and we were in New Jersey. My mom always like, you're just like your father. So I, I think I got that from him, that, that wanting to, to be a part of something bigger. I guess it must have been 17 going into 18. And I had made a few police officer friends. One of them had brought me in the actual application. I took the test and I did very well. I was a little more quieter when I went into the police, a lot more quieter when I went into the police academy, a lot more shy, but I was just more confident about myself, which was good for me because I needed that. I didn't, never really had that type of confidence. In martial arts, it's, it's a lot of respect. Respect for yourself, respect for other people. To be able to defend yourself, not so much go out and start a fight. I think that that's a lot of me because I'm not a go out and fight person. It's more of like a self-defense thing. Even getting into the ring with this fight, it's tough for me because, you know, it's not what I ever expected to get into. I'll be focused, but I'll be nervous. Focused on what I have to do, try to listen to what crew is telling me. I don't think I'll feel like I'm by myself because I think that all the girls are gonna be there and I'm gonna hear them. Uh, but actually, I think this is the first time that I may not be able to hear crew in the background going, all right, calm down, relax. Those things are gonna have to run through my head on my own. It's, it's nerve-wracking, but I'm, I'm excited for it. Just wanted to be like, when I looked up to my father and people in uniform, I guess I, I wanted 
to be able to, to be an inspiration to somebody like they were to me. I almost fell on the floor when your girl took off her shirt and was wearing a UFC ring girl outfit. Wait, and then that, if that wasn't bad enough, then she had like a bra on under it and it was just fun. Brick shit house. First of all, you don't want to go into a fight and you want like uh, somebody who's not up to your standards, do you? No, I just, you know. Don't let that, don't get in your own head. I would look like a, like a anorexic probably next to her. Everybody's bigger than me. Everybody's more ripped than I am. That's not gonna stop me. Bigger than me. She's just a brick shit house with fucking eight pack and fucking. So what? <laughs> she was trying to like stand me out. I'm like, don't fucking stand me. <laughs> if I went into every single one of my fights, like she's bigger than me, her muscles, she's got an eight pack. Yeah, she had an eight pack. So every single one of my fighters has too, and they're taller and they're bigger, but that doesn't mean anything. That's the harder they fall. And Chris is like, these two are gonna be smiling up there. I'm like, yeah, they're totally. We were the only ones. Yeah, exactly. yeah, we were the only ones smiling. I think me and her were about to have a fight right there yeah. in the ring. That hard part is over. Well, oh wait, that's the hard part? Uh, Making me. It's not the hard part. That's the fun part.
Before you know it. In time. The first time I had to wear somebody else's gear, I freaked out. Yeah. But it doesn't fit. Okay. Okay. You don't ever have fear. All smiles. Right? Speaking of amateur, a long time debut. Ladies and gentlemen, our new Hazel. Let's give it up for Hazel. Hazel Lee. Hazel consensus is what Mendez is that she just hesitated too much, you know? And that was it. I don't think you have anything to be like ashamed about, but I don't want you to be like deterred from you know, who you are and who we think you are. We think you're so awesome. I was very proud of you. Very, very proud of you. Hey, it happens. We all learn from all of our fights, you know? I think we learn more from our losses than our wins, but... Till Girl Fight came along, I only sparred with guys. I really didn't know what it was like to spar with girls. Where's that left switch? Here at Tongue Dragon, Mr. Clone has many guy fighters. We had another session today for Prairie. Coming down in the last week and a half or so. Got some sparring in and just getting her ready. Fighters are fighters in the sense that fighters are going to run into the same difficulties, whether it's 
bumps and bruises, doubt, uh, high moments, low points. A fighter's a fighter, and getting ready for a fight doesn't really change, male or female. I'm being a woman here. <laughs> no, you're being a fighter. Yeah. It's not the daily increase, but the daily decrease. Do the same things better and faster. I feel like with this fight, she never stopped. Like there was always a forward momentum since the last fight that she had. It's always been something that she's doing every day. Aside from the sparring, when you're in class, you see her in the corner just stutter step in or moving her head or bobbing and weaving. It's just something that's been building up since the last fight. There was no break. She's like a, a steamroller and she's coming to get you. Last round, last round, last round. Last round, last round. Last round, last round. Yeah, thank you. Go, hands up, go. Don't fall. All I want is fall. All I want is fall. Sparring with Prairie. Uh, it's a learning experience every single time. I feel like I learned something, maybe she learned something, or she just teaches me something that I should have known, but she doesn't have to tell me it. It's been fun to see the elevation of sparring from where we started to now, too. So there's so much more technique, and everything she does in the ring now has a purpose, so it, it sets goals for me. She's got the correct mindset and physical ability to match the Muay Thai mindset. Come on. <laughs> Turn it. As the rounds go longer, she grows stronger. So each round that goes by, she goes harder, she goes faster, she pushes more, gets angrier, and forward more and more. That's what you need to do. Worst week ever, usually. Before I go home and cry, usually the week before I fight. You're gonna wreck her. I'm so excited. Oh, this is gonna be awesome. Where's this fight? It's in Manhattan, yeah. yeah. Broad Street, it's Friday night fight. There'll be a bunch of girls going, so I don't know what your status is, but if it's single, that's beneficial as well. I'll so, have the good ones. Yeah. <laughs>
the problem once they changed my opponent four or five days ago was that I didn't have the same aggression towards this new opponent. So I've just kind of been trying to get myself <laughs> mentally into that game plan. I always get nervous. I want to see her do everything that I know the potential she has to do. You know, there's nowhere I'd rather be than in the corner helping her out. I mean, she listens to me, she hears my voice. This is her eighth fight now, so I think her nerves have calmed down a little bit. She's gonna show what a true champion that deserves the belt has to do. We're gonna kick some ass tonight. Let's get signed up. Look at that. This man's on top on the line. One of the The worst part about the whole thing is the anticipation, the waiting, the waiting, the waiting, and then the actual event happens so quick that all the waiting seems almost ridiculous. You just don't know what to do with yourself. You maybe are a little tired, you want to take a nap, but your mind is going a mile a minute, so you're not really taking a nap. Yeah, it's just waiting. That's the worst part. <laughs> Faster, leader. There we go. Do what you do, Prairie. Do what you do. These two warriors are fine for the vacant World Kickboxing Association Women's New York State title. Weighing at 124 and one half pounds, representing girl fight. Sure. 
Mm -hmm. I know. Life goes on. Still gotta go to work on Monday. Sure. I've never felt tired like this. I don't know why that why was that? Look at my shins. Oh bummer. It had to be like some kind of nerves or something because you know, you'll go round after round after round and you seem like like you were in the sixteenth round. Sorry guys. Sorry. <laughs> I do, I feel I feel I feel disappointed that I that you look disappointed. <laughs> I need to get ang I need to find that angry girl again. <laughs> oh well. Sick. Time to lift our way back to New Jersey. <laughs> Once Keith backed out, I think emotionally things had changed for me and almost uh, my inspiration for the fight kind of, I just kind of felt mediocre. I, I'm training for a fight, we have a fighter, let's just go to the fights anyway. And that's kind of what my attitude was and maybe that was the wrong attitude to, to have. On to This is my son, Davin. Can you say hi? Hi. Good, good, good. I work midnight, so I come home. He's already up and he's waiting, and so we stay up for a little while. Then I try to get a nap at some point during the day. And by the time I get home, it's already nighttime, and you now it's time to get him ready for bed, and then I finally get some real sleep, right? Unless I'm working, then I gotta go back to work. So if I'm working, then I'm headed back to work after a long day of this, and then... And then you're back home. Then I'm back home. Yeah. Oh, there you go, go! Oh, there you go, go, go! I've had this house for probably like eight or nine years now. But for me, I'm so not used to it because, because my dad was in the military and moved around a lot. It's nice that I have the stability it's just, it's, it's my place, you know, it's, and it's not going anywhere, I don't have to leave. And I think it's good for a dad and he doesn't have to live that life. He's gonna grow up, he's gonna have his friends. Cause I never had that. I didn't have friends that I grew up with because every year I was going to a different school. I never had that stability of having one close friend or two close friends. He'll grow up and, and have that available to him here because he's, now this is his home. Talking to my son about my loss helped me out a lot because when I didn't win the fight, I had to sit there and kind of explain to him that, you know, we don't always win and it's okay. You know, you just pick up and try again and you keep trying and as long as you're having fun doing what you're doing and you're enjoying it, that's really all that matters. You know, it doesn't change the person you are, it's just you doing something, you know, you enjoy doing. I grew up. You're growing up. My two biggest fears were like losing and falling. Pretty much all fears completely happened during the fight. And September 7th, uh, I'm gonna be fighting in the Warriors Cup again. I'm a lot more relaxed. I don't have those fears anymore. I'm just gonna go out there and do what I gotta do. It's gonna be good to see me do this and maybe uh, be a whole different me in that ring. I don't know, I, I, I think uh, it's just me, just keep going. It's good too for my son to see me get back in that ring. You know, show him that, yeah, you lose, you pick up and you move on, and you keep going. So how are we feeling for the fight? I feel good, I feel stronger. I mean, I think it's good that you're not stressed, uh, cause I think you got on yourself too hard last time. I'm a, I'm a little, like, I'm a, like stressed, like when it comes to like, you know, the running, you know, I know I gotta like, definitely run a lot more. I feel like I gotta run a lot more and I feel like this fight just came in like, it was like a month, so like. Do you feel like you wanna take the fight? Yeah, no, I just, I definitely, but I just like, I don't know, I feel different this fight than I did. Which is good because I think you were like, 
crazy last <laughs> fight. You know, I said, if you did that this fight, I don't know if I would personally be able to put yourself through that yeah. again. You don't forget how intense it is in there and why you didn't win the last fight. You just do what Mendez does. And, and you know, even my own next fight going into it, I'm just going to do what I do. I don't even care about that other opponent. Like, I think, like, I was stressing myself out a lot, you know, like, yeah. on what she looked like. Yeah. So many times I go to weigh-ins and I am not the girl with the eight pack and I'm not the girl who's ripped, but I am the girl that, you know, you're going to have to fight till the end. So, so that's all you need to do is you. Like, I feel like I still need to like, I, there's a lot that I still haven't worked on that I need to work on. Uh -huh. I don't know if that's a good thing. Or and this is the journey. This is the beginning of your journey. You're so green. This is your second fight. You're not supposed to know it all. You know, we train 10 things and maybe you do one of those things. You get in there, you do what Mendez does. I wouldn't put you in there if I didn't think you were capable of doing it. You know, I, I, I don't have any doubt with you. Enjoy the whole ride, okay? No stress, no worries. Everybody loves you the same no matter what, right? Yeah, not throwing me off the island. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I always say that I think losses are the best thing, um, not only for the fighter, but for the team, because the team gets to learn from the fighter's loss. I think after, you know, Curry's loss, it lit the, the fire under everybody's ass. Come back stronger, harder, better. Something that turned everybody inside to, you know, desire to want to come back and win. We've been working on a lot of things, moving forward, being aggressive, not just being known as brawlers. We want to be known as technical fighters. It has been a drastic turnaround. The girls are, you know, they're animals out here now. Deanna did not take many days off. I think she fought on a Saturday. She showed up Monday to class. She's just calmer and um, not in her head as much, which is great. So um, I just think uh, we're in a good place. I always knew she's physically able to do it, uh, but she mentally beats herself up a lot. So, But not so much this time around, so we're good. The big thing going into the second fight with Mendez was I needed her to be coachable and listen. And uh, if I said this was good enough, then I wanted her to believe that what I was saying was good enough. So she really did try to be aware of the things she was doing to herself and taking the time to fight her own fight. Since Dana's last fight, you know, she's become a, a different person, totally determined to come back. Uh, she's learning from, from those mistakes. I see light. Look how stressed she is. Good work. You can see in the bottom. She's nervous. Okay, she's. You just need to calm down. Don't get caught up in that. Relax. All right. Wait. 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 So I got frustrated a lot. And when I get frustrated, I just shut down. I think now I'm a lot more relaxed. I still have moments of frustration or moments where I feel like I could do better. Um, I just try to move past them and, and keep going. Oh, nice head movement. Circle out, throw some jabs now. Yes, again. That jab, straight. Keep it straight. Keep it straight. Straight puncher. Straight down the center. Yes, that girl. Straight down the center. All right. I'm going to do that now. We're not going to do that now. It's tough. She's tired. You know, she's got a kid and everything like that. But she's turned the tables around, and she, she wants to learn. She's working hard. You know, she's taking our advice and, and running with it. Her combos are fast, and her hands are hard. I think she's going to come ready for this fight. I was informed that due to my opponent having LASIK surgery that she couldn't fight. Basically, the, the fight was canceled because of her surgery. I am so sorry. No worries. I want to apologize. You know, no no problem. Problem. I really, really want to. Like, yeah. Because you know how it is when you're training, you put on yeah, your hard work. I know. And I've been training too, so I'm yeah. like, you know, but I'm, I'm really, really yeah. sorry. I mean, it happens, it happens, it happens. I'm very disappointed. Uh, I was really, I guess, looking forward to this. I wanted to get back in the ring and do what I did, you know, last time, but better. Hopefully we meet at the ring. Yeah. <laughs> It's a little bit of 
a bummer. She worked real hard for this fight for tonight. I think she was ready to really show, you know, all her hard work tonight. And it's a, it's a shame. It's a shame that, you know, we're not fighting tonight. You know, it stinks to be on that side. And she really wanted to fight. We trained this hard. We're getting punched and kicked for this one moment. And then the moment doesn't happen. A few moments before it's supposed to happen. I mean, I, uh, that's why I was too, uh, this, I'm, 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 I'm telling you, this is why I was too pumped. Hey Flynn, my fight's been cancelled, so uh, I don't know what you're doing. Give me a shout when you get this message, okay? All right, bye. I was I knew I was awfully awfully calm. Very typical. I guess there's a point where I feel like I want to go in the bathroom and cry, but you know, it's been six weeks of spending time training and not spending it with my son, you know, so you know, I took a lot of time out of my life to get into this fight, get my head in this fight. And I guess it gives me more time for my next fight. More, uh, more practice for my next fight. We had another devastation on the boardwalk. There was a small fire originally started at the Coors Ice Cream Place in the Berkeley Candy Shop. I was coming back from training, coming over the bridge, and there was um, some tan smoke. I didn't think it was a big deal. I just thought it was a little fire. So I cruised over to see what it was, and I saw it was a little shop on the boardwalk. Here at home, I uh, looked out the window, it was black, billowing smoke. So I got on my bike, I went over to see what was going on, and that small fire had now engulfed a whole block. Fire department after fire department coming from every area of Ocean County, doing their best to try to put this fire out. All of their efforts were lost. I watched and the more I saw that this was something they may not even be able to contain, I was preparing myself honestly for within the next 24 hours the whole boardwalk to be on fire. You know, it was heartbreaking to watch all those memories burn up and it was almost surreal in the sense could this really be happening the one section of the town that hadn't been really devastated the last section that was left could it really be on fire could we really have that bad of luck in this town and even now it feels like the one area we were allowed to go back to we now are fenced off from again after all of this recovery from hurricane sandy less than a year ago to be feeling like we're in the situation again we're starting all over again and we can only hope to have it fixed again by next year we tried to live our life like it was back to normal as best as we could, and it's been really hard. We can't harp on the bad things that have happened to us in the last year. We can just uh, recover again from them, move on. We're going to make new memories, new beginnings, and hope for something better on the other ends. This whole thing on the boardwalk is very similar to how a fighter goes through their journey. All things are going well and then something bad happens and you kind of have to reflect on what you could do better and not to let it get you down. You have to keep moving forward. That's how you have to be. You have to move on. That's how life works. It doesn't always go your way. You just got to roll with the punches and, and learn from each experience. It makes you stronger and wiser. So my next fight coming up, it's redemption. And it's not redemption for anybody else. It's a uh, redemption for me. I feel like I don't know what happened in that last fight. I trained hard, but mentally I checked out. My challenge is to get through these five rounds like a champ, but I wanna show you that I'm skilled, I'm talented, and I can run with the best of them. I'm not just fighting for me or girl fight, but I'm fighting for everybody that's in the scene in New Jersey, and I wanna represent us the right way. I want to prove that setbacks in life shouldn't alter your future. So, uh, yeah, I'm very motivated to succeed based on everything we've been through in the last year. Well, this one's zero. I'm 26. 
That's good to me. That's good to me. All right. Yeah, she looks skinny, frail. Just beat, her, beat her up, kind of beat her body up, chop her legs. Just pressure her all the time. Pressure her, trap her in the corner. Pretty small ring. I think I'm a humble fighter. I'm aggressive. Don't typically think I fight like a girl, but I don't fight like a guy either. I don't know. I'm not sure who I am as a fighter yet, honestly. I think that's part of the journey that I'm enjoying. Everything I've gotten out of each fight is that um, I'm learning more about myself, and I'm not sure who I am as a fighter yet. I'm still trying to figure that out. I think that's the joy in all of it, and something that I've actually realized to pay more focus into and paying attention is uh, what do I as a person get out of it every time I do this. With each fight, I've done something different. I've tried to not think about it. I've tried to be angry and think about it. I've tried to listen to classical music and kind of daydream about it. Physically, I know how to do it, and I feel like this trip towards this fight is me actually coming in touch with that mental aspect of paying attention. Why do I do it? I don't know. Maybe it's a question that'll never be answered. If I really think about it, you know, it makes no sense to get into a ring where somebody is actually trying to hurt you. If there's anything that fighting does for me is that fighting has taught me how to just kind of deal with life a little better and that a lot of things that people make a big deal about are not really that big of a deal. Maybe I eventually become a confident fighter and I know who I am per se. Maybe that's why I do it. Our next fight of the evening, featherweight, 125 pounds, representing girl fight, coming out of the blue corner, Prairie Julio. Yeah, yeah. Everything came together perfect. How'd you feel? I felt good. 
I was actually surprised she fell when I hit her with the cross. That was so hard. fast. Yeah. You went right down the pipe. You definitely took the fight out of her. I definitely she wasn't expecting got it. myself more worked up in my mind before the fight than I needed to do. You this know, this was but, like perfect. Yeah, you needed this. That whatever happened that last fight is not. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It. Like, I was so afraid that that was going to happen. Like, even when I was warming up, I felt a little off. I feel off, but that's okay. I feel off here, feel in there. Great. But man. yeah, yeah. Yep. So, thank you guys. I really like it. was a good night. It was a good, spontaneous night. Yeah. It was a good night. <laughs> <spontaneous. laughs> so, that? back to Jersey we go. Yay, hey, girl fight. Winner, winner. Next is a turkey dinner. Oh, oh wait, I'm cool. No, take yeah. that out. So we all eat healthy in this house. <laughs> Everybody sit, sit. <laughs> Here. Here. Riley Bear. Sit. She already did that. Down. Down. No, nope. down, down. Good girl. Good girl. James, look at James, Donald. No down. Easy. The first time I ever spoke with Jamie, uh, she called me on the phone inquiring about Girl Fight, which I hadn't started yet. I just had a website trying to see if people were even interested in the idea of an all-female martial arts school. I was cruising the internet looking for a new gym to go to. I had done some kickboxing in the past. Her website came up on the computer, uh, had the phone number, gave it a call. When I spoke with her, typical police officer, very stern, straight to the point, and I, you know, I'm a very bubbly he type of person, so I hung up the phone thinking, oh, oh that girl's got no personality, but um, I would love for her to come to Girl Fight because she sounds like she's badass. Uh, fast forward, Jamie came in um, on the first day with uh, eight other girls, and that's how I met Jamie. She was uh, one of my first students at Girl Fight. I think Prairie might have thought I was a boy um, when I first got there because I had uh, like a scully cap on, a sweatshirt, and she's like, um, well, uh, I think, uh, and then she realized, you know, um, that I just have no hair. You know, I thought it was awesome that she was taking this idea that she had of something that she didn't think was gonna blow up into so big, and, and it was just awesome. I thought, you know, she was really cool. Sometimes she lets me drive the boat. Sometimes. In the slow areas. This is this is the real New Jersey, right here, right here. I just want to make sure everybody realizes this is the real Jersey Shore. <laughs> Within, I guess, six months of her being at Girl Fight, I started finding myself attracted to her, and I was actually struggling with it because I thought, this is weird, she's a girl, what am I attracted to? I guess that's when I started questioning it. Outside of Jamie, I've always dated guys, I was married to a guy. I don't really know if I'm gay or straight. When it comes to the subject of sexuality, I'm just prairie, and you know, I have no problem loving a good person, I guess, and I'm not gender biased. I like Jamie, I'm a Jamian, that's what I am. Having somebody who understands what it needs to be to be a fighter or to be with a fighter has definitely helped. Uh, she's there to support me when I'm down and out and feeling like I'm no good and I don't want to do it. She smacks me around and shakes me up and says, suck it up, shed your tears and let's go. I can't imagine not having her in my corner, what it would be like. I love seeing Prairie fight. You know, a lot of people would be like, oh, aren't you afraid? No, she's, she's a badass chick. I know she can take care of herself. I think it's inspirational to not only me, but to everybody, you know, in our gym, especially the young girls in the kids' class. They look up to her, they think she's awesome. Uh, you know, Jamie likes a lot of the same things that I like to do. It's, uh, you know, it's like hanging out with myself, really. There's no, I don't need to be a certain way, or I never had to be different to be with her. There's a lot of times with the job that I do, like she always said, you go from funny Jamie to serious Sergeant Jamie Phillips. And I think Prairie, you know, gets me out of that person when I'm home and, and, you know, when we have our time together, she always seems to find that, you know, other side of me. I think the reason our relationship is so strong is that uh, we accept each other, we communicate, you know, we are different people, but it's okay, it's okay to be that way. I don't need to change her and I don't think she ever tries to change me. So I think that's why Jamie and I work. 
um, you know, we're enough alike and a, a, enough different, and we accept all of that. I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> little Hazel Hurricane Dongias. She's taking her third fight. Hazel is one of the easiest fighters I've ever had to work with. She picks up real quick and she's always got a positive attitude. Um, the drive down, she was just chilling in the back of the car, like she wasn't talking about it. She's calm, she's cool, she's collected in the ring. She's just as if she's coming in to girl fight to, you know, take a class or to spar. for tonight. Very excited for her. She's got such a great attitude for this and I had to come down and watch her fight and uh, support her because she's always been a, you know, there for me. And just to see her now, her movement's really good, her hands are quick. I'm really excited for her. And next into the ring, representing Girl Fight MMA, Hazel. Most girls who, who want to fight uh, after they see one of our girls fight and they get that vibe, that feeling that they want to get in there. Where Hazel is that even keel, you know, Mendez is up and down. So she may want to be like, I don't want to fight. And then she may come into class tomorrow night and be like, oh, we, you know, I went to Hazel's fight last night and I'm ready to kick some ass. You had a lot of hits on her. A lot of like body shots, head shots, your combos were amazing. Oh, you did great. You did great. I'm, I, I'm, I'm so happy for yeah. you. I think that with Deanna, it's just a mental thing. It's too much, and we haven't really even had the talk about whether she wants to really fight or not. I think she's built to fight. She just has it in her. I'm definitely looking forward for the chance to fight again. Part of me misses it and want to get back into it. If Crew finds a match for me and offers it to me, then yeah, I'll definitely take it. It was close, but you won, so you won! My next fight is May 16th in New York City at Friday Night Fights. I just want to have fun in this one. I've been working on a lot of different Muay Thai techniques and just trying to get my head right and not worry about so much of the crowd and the scene and just really focus on me and what I take out of being a fighter and what I'm trying to accomplish. Every 
fight, even if I've won it, when I watch it, I cannot stand what I see. I want to look like the fighter that I think that I can be. Yeah, I can look great on pads and I might look really good sparring in a comfortable place, but I would really like to be able to showcase my talents in an uncomfortable place. This arena, I was supposed to rematch Kate Allen and then she backed out four days before and she was replaced by a teammate that I really had no fire to fight. The fight I had in between this was a smaller show. This would be my first big show since that event. And I have been thinking about uh, the mental part of going to this place and this weird thing that happened and trying not to let that overcome uh, my strengths as a fighter. I want to go in there and I don't want to be the nice girl. I want to have that killer instinct. I want to be vicious in the ring. I want bad intentions. And that's what I'm aiming towards. I want you to want to be all over her. Like, I want you to not have that feeling like, oh, I need to back up. You want to be hungry to be in her face the whole time. I'm telling you, this camp, you, there were no, no bullshit. It was no, you know what I mean? No stopping, no whining, no nothing. You push through everything. She is, needs to be afraid of you. Like, you're going in there positive. There's no reason for you to feel like, ah, oh, like, you know what I mean? Ah. Oh. No way, 100%. You're first every time, you're putting the pressure on her. I don't care. I don't care about the power, right? I'm not afraid of that. This is probably one of the hardest uh, training camps that Prairie's ever done. She did everything right. She's in the uh, the best shape that she's ever been. Mentally, her head is there. Her physical ability is there 100%. Curry is a different fighter from her, her past fights. No wait for something to happen. Point, she's quick, she's snapping her kick, snapping her hands. Set out like how smart this girl, you know what I mean? Look for the open spots. You should know, yeah. probably just keep gonna making her pay, making her pay, yeah. making her pay. Yeah. That's gonna she be good. I think this fight is like, you know, a build up of all the other ones. Where she is with her gym, with the business, with Girl Fight, she's at the top of her game right now. This means a lot to her. I think, you know, that's why she trains so hard for this fight. She's, she's gonna do well tonight. I have a good feeling. All relaxed, all relaxed. You got this, baby, you got this. All right? All right, everybody, get ready for three rounds of action in the Muay Thai Featherweight Division. We get 125. Representing the Girl Fight. Rory, the new
right, ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of action in the featherweight division, we have a majority decision. Judge A sees this fight 28-29 in favor over Red Point. Judge B sees this 29-28 in favor of the Blue Point. And Judge C finds in favor of, from Ontario, Canada, Tiffany Yeah. I think so, yeah. for sure. Yeah. One, absolutely. Two was close. Three, she had. Like, a complete improvement, definitely. Yeah. And your leg kicks were hard. I felt like I landed some, yeah. Definitely. She was all red. Yeah. She was all red at the first definitely. round. <laughs> oh, well. What do you feel good do? about it? Yeah, I don't feel like, good. I don't feel like, oh, my God, what just happened? Yeah. You did awesome. You did. You did, right. You did what we've been training. So you did go into Cray Prairie. Cray Cray. Yeah, I didn't Cray -Cray. hear you saying go, go Cray Cray. Prairie, you know, a couple times you were a headhunter. I know you wanted to knock it I didn't. Off. I don't think I even punched her in the body once. Yeah, you did really good. You did really you did. good. You did a lot more than you think. Oh, I don't you feel like defeated or like the last time I was here, I was like, what happened out there? You did good. You did. Once you see it, you'll have a bigger story. Oh, well, you win some, you lose some. What are you going to do, you know? You know, I think I'm okay with losing. And, you know, a year ago I hadn't lost much and um, it was all about win, win, win. And now I think it's about what did I get out of it. This fight, I don't feel like what happened to me. I just, I just lost the fight. You know, I didn't get my butt kicked or anything like that. I was present, so, so it is what it is. You know, another fight, another day. You, you learn so much about yourself and if you get so caught up in the loss, you won't see what you learned, you know? So you're so much stronger after every fight, especially a loss, so. I don't feel too banged up. Um, my shins have looked worse, so let's start training again on Monday. <laughs> Um, we're bowing in. All right, class, attention! Yes, ma'am! All right. So this week at Girl Fight has been a week of promotions. All the girls have been working hard to get their armbands. Uh, at Girl Fight, I do require all students to spar for their testing. Tonight, we'll see a lot of girls that never spar before. Yeah, they punch pads and everything, but it's good for them to see how hard it is to really be a fighter and to hit a moving target. We'll have some girls that have been with us for a long time that love to spar. We'll have some girls who really don't want to do this tonight at all. But they love girl fights, so they'll do it. <laughs> Remember, girls, that this is just a testing requirement. Just getting in here is conquering all kinds of fears and emotions to begin with, and that's what I'm looking for, all right? So you've already made it. Yeah. I'm highly disappointed, but uh, Deanna has decided to go to another gym. I don't know why, but hey, I wish her well, and that's all That's all I can do. I can't keep somebody at my gym who doesn't really want to be there. Um, I did leave the school. I'm now training at a new school. I, I needed a change of pace. I had been missing classes. I hadn't been going. I think at that point I knew it was kind of, I just needed a change. I took a little bit of a break. I decided uh, to join a different school. Um, which actually works out because now my son gets to go to the school too and I get to watch him work out while I'm working out. Deanna's going to start a new chapter in a new school and maybe it's not about being a fighter anymore. I think she's going to really be more punished by the not following through and taking that another fight. If the opportunity arose then and I was uh, I was up for it, yeah, I, I would fight again. I don't, I don't think there's anything that would stop me from, you know, wanting to get back into the ring. It was a right move for me to make, leaving Girl Fight, but I do miss my friends. I miss the girls. For me, I'll always look back at it as a really a really fun time in, in my life. So don't think I made a bad decision. I just, I miss my friends. I hope for Deanna that she learned from Girl Fight to, you know, just be okay with who she is and accept all the positive energy that's around her and try to deflect some of the negative energy that, that she sometimes creates for herself. You know, besides learning the martial art um, from Prairie. She gave me a lot of positive reinforcement and uh, encouragement to get into the ring because I don't think that, that was something I ever really thought I would do or something that I was 
that I'd ever want to do. So I think in 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 that aspect, she she was she was very 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 much encouraging、um, through it and and even before it. I think I grew as a person. I think、um, I realized what I wanted for myself, and made me stronger physically, but it also made me stronger mentally. I just learned really not to not to give up, not to、um, and just to keep pushing forward. I just wish her well, and I hope she took something positive from Girl Fight. I don't have any、uh, any huge plans right now. Just just want to smile every day. That's it. <laughs> You know, Deanna is one of over 150 people, and there are more people that have the same goals or ideas. So what I'm doing in September is I'm having tryouts for the team, and it's going to be a roller coaster of emotions because、uh, people say they want to fight, but once they get punched in the face, that will determine whether they can handle that or not. Nobody likes that. Over the last year, the Jersey Shore and where the town I live in, Seaside Heights, has、uh, been trying to recover from Hurricane Sandy. And、uh, while some things recovered quickly, a lot of businesses and homes that are still not at a place that they can be lived in or worked in, a lot of things need to be fixed. But we're stronger than before. We're moving forward. This year already, we've seen more people at the boardwalk, and、uh, and business is doing really well. You know we're recovering. It was、uh, a lesson learned. It was only a matter of time before something like that would happen, and、uh, we'll be all right. In the last year and a half that I've been doing this documentary, my mindset and the way I feel about、uh, you know being a fighter and、uh, being part of the scene and everything has changed dramatically. Um, when we first started doing this, I was defending a belt that I ended up being robbed of. I had to have a grudge match because everybody told me that's how it had to be. And then the next fight, I had like an anxiety attack pretty much in the ring while somebody was punching and kicking me.、So、I had to learn how to be okay with one of the most embarrassing moments of my life. Everybody got to see it. I didn't really think I cared what people thought about me, but it did. It really like made me kind of question why I was doing this, and、uh, am I still doing it for fun? It's fun again, and I realized that the journey is the most important part. Yes, as a fighter, I want all those notches on my belt to be wins, but the journey has become more interesting. And who am I on the other side of the eight-week camp and the fight? I like the journey, and.、Uh, Who knows? You know when the end is, or if there'll ever be an end. I can't really see a life without Muay Thai in it. So, if there's anybody in the school that I made wait a very long time for her first armband, <laughs> really love having her in our school, loving her, having her in class, and definitely love having her as the front line in our team. Yeah.、Um, she's amazing. She's got a great spirit about her. Mona Gio, I want a big right hand. <laughs> <laughs> so, you're amazing. I'm just saying to Jamie yesterday, like I love having you here, Mona girl. Yeah. <laughs> oh, here we go. You my girl. We're gonna try and get through this without a tear. <laughs> She's coming. Mona. I've always felt almost not worthy of this great pedestal I get to stand on at Girl Fight. I'm a normal human being with all kinds of issues, just like everybody else. But I'm lucky that several hours throughout every day I, I get to be. Somebody's happy place. The person that somebody looks forward to coming to see, or to give them strength when they're feeling weak, and it's an amazing feeling. And it's a really amazing feeling when your student pulls off a move, or to see them throw a kick that they were not capable of doing in the past is so rewarding. And you think, wow, that's so cool that they were able to do that,、um, and that they, you know, they they listened to what I was saying, and that it actually meant something to them. You know, life isn't always gonna go our way. It's not always easy. It's not always happy. But we learn to overcome those those setbacks. You know, that happened to us. You know, we can't worry about things that we have no real control over. We can just learn from them and get stronger and be a better person on the other end of it. Because it is a certain type of self discipline that you've got to keep pushing when you start to feel that maybe you're not good at this or maybe you're not as strong as someone else. And you got to push past that and you got to keep showing up and you got to keep training. So that you find your own strength. The future of Girl Fight, you know, Girl Fight has always kind of done her own thing. I'm just driving the bus, 
she's got her own fuel and she's headed in her own direction. What I hope for is I hope to inspire more women, grow our kids program because I see a lot of benefit in, um, in the kids and the teens program. And, uh, you know, of course, put out more fighters as well and, and just be recognized as one of the best martial arts schools in the area, not just because we're female, but because we are the best at what we do. Yeah, you know, definitely. I mean, it's uh. Oh, <laughs> Take two. Take two. <laughs> Scratch that. <laughs> um, he wants you to introduce yourself and what you do at Girl Fight. Hi, I'm Jamie Phillips, and I'm a coach at Girl Fight. <laughs> what do you think uh, of seeing your opponent for the first time today? Uh, I don't know. She's nice. <laughs> We're not, you know, pussy girls that, you know, we're all about, you know, shopping and, you know, doing our hair, obviously. Um, I made it chocolate, banana, so it's pretty good. It's not real, well, it is real chocolate, but you guys wouldn't like it because it's no sugar, no cacao. Cacao, cacao. <laughs> well, you said you were. <laughs> I don't think I was that weird. <laughs> All right. I'm so stressed out right now. So Can you tell I'm sweating? <laughs> okay. Yeah, like. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> Sorry, Matt. <laughs> Sorry, Matt. Edit that. that. She burped. <laughs> Real ladies burp. <laughs> You know, I feel like I'm in Hollywood. Right? Oh, yeah. I just, I just, I we just, just ignore there. him. It's my cameraman. It's I the, the until he says, do you mind doing an interview with me real quick? And the camera's like, literally like up your nose here. <laughs> I've seen that. I've seen me do interviews at the Warriors Cup. I've seen it. I didn't know who you were. <laughs> do I need to do Maybe you want more than that. <laughs> All right, Take 1,375. <laughs> Do we have the mic on? <laughs> la, 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 la. You, she's gonna fucking wish that she didn't come up from Canada, eh? How do you like that? Canadian. I knew, I knew a couple of Canucks in my day. <laughs> You win some, you lose some, and I don't know where I'm going with this. <laughs> you didn't answer the question at all. I'm like, well, I don't think this has anything to do with the question, Prairie. <laughs> what is the question again? I will. Ah! I will. Ah! 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 do you love me? I love you. I don't know how people do this. Okay, yeah, I think you should just make a blooper show. <laughs> okay. okay, I'll take it. Yeah, blooper reel. <laughs>